Well, I'm very to launch a podcast in 2022. Well, in this episode, we're going to show you how you can launch your podcast from your live streams with ease. Maybe you're procrastinating, you're struggling with creating that content. Maybe you want to create lots of content from one live show. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in this show. We'll be with you just after this. Well, hello, welcome to this show. This is Winning With Live Video. Welcome, this is the show from Restream which helps you win with live video. We're here every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, that's 12 noon Eastern, 5 p.m. in the UK, which is where I am, or 6 p.m. Central European time. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to go through all the time zones in the world, but uh, I'm really glad that you are here watching. Uh, let me know where in the world you are watching from. It would be great to know where you're watching from. Uh, and yes, we've got some exciting news from Restream. Restream have been doing lots of really cool things. This is the show. Uh, this show is powered by Restream, which is the complete multi-streaming suite, I think you could call it, for whether you're an entrepreneur, small business, a gamer. It does so many cool things. It allows you to broadcast to more than 30 different destinations. Uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, so uh, you can do this through the browser, which is what I'm doing today. I'm using the uh, Restream Studio, or you could use a third-party tool. If you want to get a bit geeky and use tools like OBS Studio or Ecamm Live, you can use that tool and broadcast to uh, Restream and then let Restream do all the magic. But today I'm keeping things really super simple and I'm using Restream Studio. A little bit more about that in a minute because there's some really cool things that you can do now in Restream, whether it's Restream Studio or uh, using the other features of Restream, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me know where in the world you're watching from. Uh, also, by the way, I don't think I've introduced myself. <laughs> I'm Ian Anson Gray. I'm from the Confident Live Marketing Academy, and I help entrepreneurs level up their impact, authority, and profits through the power of Confident Live Video. But in today's show, we're going to be talking about podcasting. So, I want to know from you, um, let me just see if I've got the button. Is this going to work? No, that's the wrong button. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. It's not working. The, I had all these, I had all these working in, in advance, but the chat seems to be like, really weird. Okay, well, ignore that in the comments because it's not the right comment. What I was going to ask you is, um, as well as where in the world you're watching from, <laughs> Don't you love it when the tech doesn't work? Uh, where in the world are you watching from? But also, what kind of device are you watching on? Are you uh, this on? Are you watching on a TV or a mobile device uh, or whatever? Let me know. Let's see who we've got watching. We've got Martin Buckland watching from Toronto. Great to see. You. Hope you're doing really well. It is snowy. Well, it's not snowy. It's not snowy here, but it's it's always snowing where you are in the winter months or the autumn months. So. I hope you're able to get out of your house and move around, Martin. Um, hope you're coping with that. Uh, but it's great to see you, Martin, as always. Uh, sorry the chat, uh, the the comments weren't working there. For some reason, I've entered the wrong chat details. But a little bit more about Restream and some new cool stuff that's happening. I've talked a lot about pairs, Restream pairs. Um, now, with Restream Studio, you can have up to nine guests on this show. That's 10 people in total, so you can have a real party. But as well as live streaming to lots of different places at the same time, wouldn't it be cool if you could allow your guest to broadcast your show to their channels as well? Now, I don't have a guest today, but for example, if I had Martin on the show as a guest, or even if he wasn't on the show, what we could do is we could, uh, I could give him a special link, which Restream gives you. It's called the Pairs link. And he could then broadcast it out to his channels as well, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Thank you, views, for watching on YouTube, uh, saying you don't even know nine people. I'm sure that is not correct. I'm sure you do know more than that. Um, 
But you don't need, I mean, I, to be honest, I've probably the maximum I've had on the same time is five, but I do know some people who have more than that. Um, so for example, if you are, you've got like a group call on Zoom, why not do it on here and broadcast that to your Facebook group or something like that? So there's loads of uh, cool things there you could. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got uh, Natalia watching from the beautiful Ukraine, watching on your mobile phone. One of these days, Natalia, I will get to the Ukraine. It's one of those countries I'd love to go to. I've been to quite a few other places in, in Europe. I've been to Poland and S Slovakia and Slovenia, places like that, but I've not gone uh, over to the Ukraine. So I hope you're ha having a great time there, watching on LinkedIn. It's always great um, to do that. Uh, to, to to broadcast on LinkedIn. I love the LinkedIn community. Um, so yeah, talked about pairs, but there's a new cool feature in uh, Restream. Now let's see if I can show you this before we get on with the main thing. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a little bit weird. Okay, when I share my screen now, you're gonna get a bit of an infinite loop. But this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen in Restream. So you'll probably see myself lots of times there. Um, but uh, basically, Restream, the developers at Restream have updated the settings panel, which is cool. So uh, hopefully you can see this. Let me know in the comments if you can see this. Um, now, uh, so we've now, it's now broken up into four ses settings here, uh, sections, sorry. So we've got the general, this allows me to change the, uh, the live stream quality. So currently I'm broadcasting in 1080p. Also cool things there. And the video, uh, I can now mirror my camera. So if you look on the bottom right, I can swap that around, which now I don't I don't really have an issue with this, but I know a lot of people struggle because when they see themselves, it's kind of a mirror image. So if you want to swap yourself around, you can do that. I'm just going to go back to normal. You've also got advanced uh, features here. So for example, the uh, resolution of your camera Currently, I'm doing that as 1080p as well, but you've got the option to change all of those. So I really like the way uh, they're broken up into those different sections. I think it's so much uh, so much easier to use. Now, as well as that, uh, you've got shortcuts. Now, this has been around for a few weeks, but it's, uh, if you want to change the settings on the fly, if you have a Stream Deck, for example, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, you can uh, assign these different shortcuts to do different things. So for example, if you've got background music you want to uh, play or you want to bring in a background like an RTMP source or a local video, if you want to load up the settings, change the layout and all this kind of stuff like uh, picture in picture, you can, uh, you can assign these shortcuts to do all of that, which is pretty amazing. So I don't know whether you could see that. Hopefully you could on the screen. Um, it is really cool. And one of the things that I love to do is play around with my Stream Deck. So hopefully you can see this okay. So I've got, I've actually got two Stream Deck XLs there. That's my monitor over there. And that's my uh, camera and teleprompter. So I can see, I've also got my notes on there, if you can see that. Um, so a little bit more about that in a bit, but that's pretty cool. I can switch my camera back there. Um, yeah, so uh, let's have a look, see if we've got any more comments coming in here. Uh, Views also says, um, but seriously, this pairs tech sounds awesome. Got to check out the tutorial videos now. It's really simple, simple to do. Uh, you you know, it's all all you need to do. If you, have a, if you bring in a guest, so as soon as you schedule an event in uh, Restream, whether that's uh, using Restream, the Restream Studio or the other way, uh, it will then give you the option to bring in guests and also will give you the pairs link. You just send that link to your guests and they will just then be able to add their channels to the stream as well. So you need to do that in advance so that they know about that. Aaron, yes, I do have two stream decks. In fact, I don't know whether you noticed this, um, but let's see if I can share this. Um, I've actually got three. I've got so I've got my two Stream Deck XLs and I've got a third one, which I'm kind of not using at the moment, which I know is totally excessive. That's t actually my wife's Stream Deck. But I was I was live I was live producing an event uh, two weeks ago and I just ran out of buttons, <laughs> so I got another one. So that's really cool. In Restream, you can now assign buttons on the Stream Deck to do different things, and I need to little play around with that. Yes, it is pretty epic. So. 
One of the things I was going to ask, uh, if you're watching live or watching the replay, is have you launched uh, a live, have you launched a podcast or a live show? And are you thinking about doing that in this year or next year? The whole, the whole um, thing that I want to talk about in today's show is all about uh, launching your podcast, launching your podcast in 2022. But you may have already done that. And if so, I'd love to know from you what your uh, podcast is and how's that, how that, how that is going. I hope that in today's show, you'll still, lo still learn loads of things because we're going to be talking about launching and growing and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and by the way, this is very rude of me. I forgot to mention my uh, if you want to find out more about Restream, and if you want to get a free month, then go to iag.me forward slash Restream. That's iag.me forward slash Restream. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into it. This is exciting. So um, let's talk about the advantages of creating your podcast from your live stream. What are the What are the advantages in doing that? Uh, because there are loads, actually. There are loads of advantages in doing it that way. Now, you've got a couple of choices here. You could launch a podcast on its own. So this is a, a what I call a standalone podcast. Or you could launch it from your live stream. So effectively, what you're doing there is you're repurposing your live stream into a podcast. Now, I don't know about you. You could, you could argue that I'm being lazy here, but I, I think I'm being smart. I have a live show that goes live in most weeks. I'm having a bit of a break this week, but most weeks I go live twice per week. That, those episodes then get repurposed into a podcast, into a blog post, into loads of other different things as well. The cool thing about that is that I only need to turn up for one of them, one show, and then that ends up being repurposed into loads of other podcasts. But let's, let's, Let's talk about just setting up a, a podcast on its own because in some ways it is easier. You don't need to worry about video. You can batch record. So for example, I could set aside a time every, I don't know, the first Tuesday of every month and I could just record, I know, I could I could record four or five podcast episodes in that one day and that's all done for the, the month, uh, which is really cool. So those are big advantages in a podcast on its own with any without live streaming. But what are the advantages in starting off with a live stream? Well, video is obviously amazing. It's great, a great way to repurpose into YouTube videos, into Instagram stories and videos. So if you just start with audio, an audio podcast, then you're missing out on all these amazing things to repurpose it for, for later. Also, video shows the more human side to you and your business or your character, whatever you're doing your live show or your podcast for, it it's much more, it shows much more of the human side to it. And that's really, really important. The third advantage, and this is a biggie, I wonder whether you um <laughs> whether you resonate with this. I'm a recovering perfectionist and I found creating content, quality content regularly, really hard. I'm also a recovering procrastinator as well. So live video is great for this because I scheduled this show in advance. I said, this is going to go live 5 p.m. UK time on Tuesday. And so I have to turn up. This is like non-negotiable. I have to turn up. It also means I'm planning. I planned this in advance. I do it. And then I'm going to create this uh, content that I can then repurpose for later. It's never going to be perfect. I've already stumbled over my words a few times on the show and I've made mistakes. But the thing is, this is quality content that I'm sharing with you. And the other advantage is community. You guys watching live, you're commenting and you're asking questions, I hope, and being involved. And that gives much more of a a fun and party atmosphere, which can work really well for the replay and for the podcast. So there are loads of really amazing advantages. And I do this, I've been doing this since May 2019. I've been going live most weeks, sometimes twice per week. And that's allowed me to be really consistent with my podcast. I've not missed an episode since May 2019 and a blog post every single week and a newsletter and social media images. It works really, really well. 
Aaron is talking about the stream decks again. We love the tech, don't we? What is your, if you're watching live or the replay, what is your favorite piece of tech? Is it, I don't know, it could be a computer, it could be a stream deck, it could be your microphone or something like that. Let me know. I just got a stream deck, you're saying, and I do feel like I need more buttons already. <laughs> now, one of the things about the stream deck actually is that you can, you do have the ability to uh, have different uh, pages and you can cycle through them. So let me just uh, show you this. Um, so here I can actually go up a, up a layer and I've got my different shows there. That's my Confident Live show. So if I'm doing a, uh, this is not gonna work, but I've got lots of different uh, scenes there. Um, uh, and then I was doing an event for a, a client of mine. So there's uh, lots of different buttons here that I can click on for those different events. So yeah, there's 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 loads of different options there that can uh, that will help you with the Stream Deck, so you're not running out of of buttons. So you don't have to get that. Martin Buckland, I know you do an amazing job with your Tuesday at two, and it's your episode sixty nine today. Two hours time is that is that today, Martin? Because uh, I actually forgotten what time it is at the moment. It's probably, yeah, it's been noon. Noon, yes, that's right. So it's noon where you are. So t there we go. I hope you're impressed with my mathematical skills there. Congratulations. That is awesome. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you have launched a podcast. Martin, are you going to launch a podcast? Aaron, are you launching a podcast? Natalia, if you're still here watching on LinkedIn, are you launching a podcast? Let's talk about some advantages in podcasts. Um, oh, by the way, the other thing I was just going to say, although you can't batch your live videos, so it wouldn't be a good idea to do four live shows in a row on one day, you can kind of batch another way. So you, I batch it, I do two per week, and my podcast is one per week. So actually, already I have got episodes up until the middle of January all sorted for my podcast because I've been, uh, I, what's the word, I've been kind of batching them up that way. So it is definitely possible. So some uh, podcast stats. I've got, I've got quite a few stats from podcasts and live shows to share with you today. I found out today that 32% of Americans, I'm sure it is very similar stats for other countries in the world, but in America, 32% of Americans listen to podcasts. That is a huge number. Now, but also it shows that there's still tremendous growth because obviously... 68%, I'm using, again, I'm using my amazing mathematical skills here. I hope you're really impressed with me. 68% of Americans don't listen to podcasts. But so I think it, this is really cool in, in two ways. First of all, that's still a, a hefty percentage of, of people that are listening to podcasts, but that is only going to grow. Um, so I think that is really, really cool. And I wonder whether you listen to a podcast, what is your favorite podcast? Um, and if even if you don't listen to a podcast, like for example, in the last year or year and a half, because I've not been doing so much driving, I've not been listening to so many podcasts, but I am starting to now as I start to get out a bit more into the real world. So there you go, podcast stats. Let's move on to a subject that I know is close to your, probably most of your hearts, certainly close to my heart, and that is gear and tech. We love the gear and tech, don't we? We talk about mics and cameras and computers and tools and all that kind of stuff. The Outdoor Station is in the house watching on the tube. Great to see you. If this is all you have to do, it is easy to fill your time going live. Editing, repurposing content, but most people wanting to podcast or go live also have a real job. It can be a struggle with time. Really, really good points. So it kind of depends on life, actually. And I'm so glad you brought this up because this is something that's really, really close to my heart and really important because we're all in different situations. You know, some of us have families, some of us are single, some of us are married, some of us are not, some, some of us have a full-time job and this is a side hustle and we're at different stages in our lives. And so like for me, this is my full-time job. And so yes, it is, in some respects, easier for me to repurpose some of this content. But I, I mean, you know, I've got, a, I've got a young family, and so I, you know, I can't work in the evenings. I've got to focus my time during the day. 
the the important thing here is is to only do what you can do. So you've got to think about the time allocated to yourself. So it might be that you've only got like a couple of hours twice per week to do this. And so that might be one live show. That's that's an hour out of the way. You've got half an hour, maybe an hour to uh, to to do the planning for that. Uh, and then you've got to think about the repurposing. Well, I'm going to be sharing with you today some tools that will make that really super quick. And also the other thing to think about is don't be a perfectionist about this. When it comes to editing, you don't need to edit to the nth degree. And I feel a bit of a hypocrite here because I tend to, or I used to be able, I used to kind of over edit my podcasts. Uh, now I'm just keeping all the imperfections in because people really like that. So I think that's a really, really important, uh, a really important uh, thing to say. And I will also love about you. You also have a real job. <laughs> yes, because I sometimes feel my job isn't real. I, I, I'm not being funny here. I just like my my kids like asked me a few years ago what it is that I do, and I kind of like said, "Well, I help." businesses do live video and they kind of see me on Facebook and YouTube and they just think I'm playing around. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not sure what you're talking about here. Um, views about it's a huge area. Uh, I can't, yeah, maybe what were we talking about, about podcasting and live streaming? I, I don't know, but thank you for your comment. Uh, that is awesome. Right. So let's talk about microphones cameras, computers, and tools. And I'd highly recommend that you check out last week's episode for Winning With Live Video. I was joined by the amazing Anita Wong. She's done loads of stuff for Restream. She's created the course on Restream, if you haven't checked that out. And we were talking about tech to use or to buy tech for live streaming that doesn't break the bank, that's not expensive, and that's going to keep things simple. And I'm a huge fan of that. Now, the studio that I've got here, you know, I know we've kind of talked about my two stream decks and my lighting and, and, and everything, but you don't need to start off with it. I certainly didn't. This has taken time for me to add to my studio. I've been doing this since 2016, 2015. And so it's been one step at a time. I'm, I'm a big believer in bootstrapping your live video studio. But if you have a small budget or even a bit more of a, a, a bit of a bigger budget, the tech that I would start off with, whether you are looking at a, turning this into a podcast or not, is not your camera. It is one of these. It's a microphone because audio is absolutely vital. If my audio was really poor, you would probably not be staying here for very long. It would be too um, annoying, too frustrating for you watching. Hopefully my audio is good. If you like my audio, I'd love to know from you what you think of the audio. I've spent a lot of time trying to make it as good as possible. The important thing here, though, is to go for a microphone that doesn't have to be expensive, but that's going to not pick up lots of background noise. And that's why I recommend these things. This is actually a, a Samsung QTU. Let me just put this in the comments because unfortunately all my pre-prepared uh, com comments aren't working anymore. But it's Samsung QTU microphone. I'll put it in the chat so that you can see that. Now, this is a dynamic microphone, which means I have to be fairly close to it for it to pick up my sound. Now, I know... Some of you might not like the idea of the microphone on camera. There are alternatives to this, but I think it's really cool because the audio quality is going to be much better. It's going to pick up, pick up less of that background noise. And it's a relatively inexpensive microphone. You can pick this up for about 60 bucks, 60 pounds, 60 euros. I mean, it's all around the same kind of price at the moment. Um, but yeah, really, really good. Now, this microphone here is a Heil PR40. It's kind of beloved by podcasters all around the world, but it's a lot more expensive. It's around the 300 and something dollar mark. So it's a lot more expensive. Also, this has an XLR um, output, whereas this, I don't know if you can see, if I can get it in focus, it might not get in focus. Hold on, let me just get out of the way. No, it's not going to get in focus, but just take it from me. It has an XLR out, um, output, but it also has a USB. So you can plug this directly into your computer. So you don't have to kind of mess around with any kind of difficult and complicated and expensive equipment. So that's the first thing I would uh, look at. The second thing is make sure you have a decent uh, enough computer. Now for Restream Studio, you don't need expensive software. 
expensive hardware, I should say. Uh, so something like um, just, you know, a, a standard PC laptop or, or, or desktop. If you've got a Mac, then the M1 Mac Mini is like amazing. Uh, and it's actually one of the cheaper computers that you can get at the moment for about 700, just under $700. And actually you can get even cheaper than that. So that's something to think about. That's the next thing. Um, now, what else? What else do you need? Uh, so what else have I got listed here? So we've got microphone, we've got the computer, internet speed is obviously important as well. And then you've got a way, uh, then cameras, obviously some kind of camera like the, uh, now where is it? I did have it and I've lost it. The, uh, the, the Logitech cameras are good, but again, don't, don't overthink it. The next thing that you will need is a way to capture your video and your audio so as, and bring in guests as well. So it's, uh, you might be a solo podcast or it might be, you might have a, a guest on your show as well. So obviously I'm going to recommend Restream for this because even if you're not going to turn it into a live stream, you could record only in Restream as well. And the cool thing is with Restream, you've got the ability to save the video and the audio separately. And not only that, but you can save the your audio and your guest's audios um, as separate files. So if your guest has a coughing fit halfway through, it's going to be okay because you can cut that bit out for later. So Restream is amazing. And if you want to find out more about that, then check out the, my previous show, which was called Podcast Now. And I've got whole episodes on how to do that. But it's really, really amazing. Definitely check that out. Um, I'd love to know from you, what is your favorite tool um, or favorite gear when it comes to live streaming for recording video or audio? Uh, but definitely check all of those things out. And then the final thing, if you are having guests on your show, actually, it's not the final thing because there's about two or three th more things that are important. Uh, if you are bringing guests onto your show, you want to make sure that they can book a time with you when your live show is going to come out or for your podcast. Uh, and so the the tool I'd recommend for this is called Calend Calendly, if I can spell it, pronounce it right. Calendly is amazing. I'm going to put it in the comments. I had prepared this earlier, but it's not working. Uh, Calend Calendly. There you go, Calendly. And it's uh, got a free free plan. It's also got some paid plans as well. It is amazing. Calendly is uh, a way of bringing in, uh, allowing your guests to book onto your show. It's really, really cool. Podcast editing now and video edit editing Descript. Uh, I've talked about this so many times. Have you checked out Descript? It works perfectly with Restream. So I'm going to put uh, this into the comments. It is iag.me forward slash Descript. I love it because you can download the video or the audio from Restream, bung it into Descript. It will then transcribe the audio and you can edit your podcast or your video using the wave editor at the bottom if you want or the text. So if you went said um and er and, and all that kind of stuff, or you, you misspoke, you can just delete the words and it will delete it from your podcast. And then you can export it as an MP3 and then you're all done. It is so amazing. All amazing. I love it. Descript is so cool. Definitely check it out. We've got uh, John Aid watching on YouTube. Great to see you. Uh, good to see you, brother, too. Hope you're doing really well. Uh, we're talking about how to launch a podcast from your live stream. So I'd love to know from you, have you got your own podcast? Are you going to launch it next year in 2022? That's what this show is all about. And we're talking about how to do that from your live show. Uh, so that was Descript at iag.me forward slash Descript. It's either Descript or Descript. I don't know whether, how you pronounce it. I'm, I don't know. I'm British, so I say Descript. But I've heard a lot of uh, people from America say D Descript. So anyway, there you go. Right. So you've done all of that. You've gone live. You've got all the tech and the gear. You've not broken the bank. You kept it really simple. You've uh, booked your guest, of course, using Calendly. You've downloaded it, bunged it into Descript, edited it. That sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Because what you can do with Descript is you can bung uh, so the intro and the outro, if you have, edit it really quickly, download it as an MP3. The next thing that you will want to do is just 
allow people to listen to it, to for your podcast to be found. In order to be found, it needs to have a podcast feed. It needs to be submitted to po uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all those places. So you need a podcast host. Now, there are loads of podcast hosts out there, and I recommend that you do your own research here. Uh, to find out the best one for you. Now, the one that I highly recommend, it's not the cheapest, um, but it's not mega expensive either, is one called Captivate FM. I've talked about this on a previous show, um, but I love this for so many reasons. And they've got so many cool, uh, how would you, how do you spell it? Captivate, Captivate, I-A-G to me, forward slash Captivate is where you go there. And the thing I love about this is it's focus focuses on your podcast growth, growing your podcast over time because you want to grow your audience and Captivate really helps with this. It's also one of the easiest and most beautiful, it has one of the most beautiful UIs I've ever seen. And just today, they have launched something really cool. It's called Amy and it allows you to insert ads. So if you want to, uh, we're talking a, bit, a little bit more about this next week, uh, talking about how you can monetize your live shows, but this will allow you to get sponsors for your live show, uh, for your podcast, sorry, uh, and you can insert pre-rolls, mid-rolls, and post-rolls really easily, including you can even paint over previous ads that were baked into your live shows and podcasts. It is amazing. So definitely check out Captivate FM. Go to IAG.me forward slash Captivate. I'm just, I just use them because I, I love it. And uh, I, you know, that's, that's basically it. Okay, cool. Let's have a look what's next. I think we need some more podcasts stats. What do you reckon? So the last one was about 32% of Americans listen to podcasts. How about this as an amazing stat? 75%, 75% of podcast listeners do so to learn new things. And I think it's the same with, um, I don't have a stat for this for live shows, but I think, you know, you watching today, hopefully you're here to be, you know, entertained. But I think the main reason you're here watching, let me know, actually, I'd be really interested. But hopefully you're here because you want to learn new things. And it's the same with podcast listeners. So if you've got a live show, whether you are a gamer or you're a business coach or whatever, your audience are there probably to learn new things. So don't just post out loads of fluff. Teach new things. Make it really accessible and interesting. And uh, podcast listeners in particular are looking to learn and to develop themselves. So definitely check that out. This is another stat which I love, um, which is there are currently over 2 million active podcasts. Now that sounds like a lot, but when you compare this to YouTube channels, I mean, how many YouTube channels are there? I, I should have checked this out before. How many YouTube channel. Yeah, there we go. That's one of the first things in Google. Okay. So what was the difference? Uh, let's have a look. What, what if I, yeah. So there are 2 million active podcasts. I'd love to know from you actually, how many without cheating, don't cheat, don't cheat, don't, don't Google it. How many active YouTube channels are there? Cause I want to do a comparison here because I think often we think, oh, well, there's no point starting my podcast because I'm too late to the game. There's there's too many podcasts out there. Now, 2 million sounds a lot. I'll give you a hint. There are some more uh, YouTube channels than there are podcasts, uh, podcasts out there. But I'd love to know from you watching if you can guess how many, if you're feeling brave. Are you feeling brave to guess how many YouTube channels there are out there? Well, I don't see anyone commenting on this. I think you're Googling it. <laughs> well, shall I tell you? Let's see. Have I got any? I've got a, a, a drum roll here. I know there's a delay. I know there's a delay. But anyway, here we go. That good timpani roll? Or should we have this one? Okay, there are, amazingly, 37 million YouTube channels. Can you believe that? 37 million YouTube channels compared to just 2 million podcasts. Um, out there. So it's no, it's certainly not too late to start. And I think that is pretty amazing stuff. So um, let's look at the next thing that I want to talk about, 
which is with a podcast, it's very much listening later on. You're you're from the you're, the podcast listener is in the future, and that one of the disadvantages with podcasts, I think, is particularly if you're starting out, it's difficult. It's difficult to get that feedback you know unless you're you've got this real big community to begin with most of us when we start it's a bit of a a bit of a difficult time because like the first 12 or 14 episodes that I created I didn't really get any feedback from my podcast until I went to a conference and I met uh, some people who in fact I met about four or five people who were avid listeners on my podcast and they never told me until the conference you know it's kind of quite an intimate experience plugging you into your ears um so a lot of people don't tell you that they are listening and so it's quite a lonely time and actually a lot of podcasters just give up after say the the 12th or even the 10th episode because they just don't get that feedback now live is different yes there are some issues with this but um uh, th there are some issues with um, growing your audience on on the on the on on live. In fact, Alfonso, don't worry. It's it's absolutely cool. You have to go watch later. Thank you so much for being here. It's just awesome that you've uh, been here, and I really appreciate you. The views you said nine thousand uh, nine thousand five hundred. Okay, I can round up. Yeah, it's it's a lot. There are a lot of YouTube channels. But the thing about live video that I love is the community. It's you watching live. It's the, yes, the replay audience are great too. But I can talk with you live and you can give me feedback uh, as well. And we can have a conversation. And there's something really amazing about that. I love that part. Now, if you're really smart about the way you manage your audiences, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. This makes the resultant podcast much more fun. It has a more of a kind of community feel, a party feel. And of course, you can encourage your podcast listeners to go and watch you live if they want to contribute to questions as well. So I think that is great, a great part of um, the community side of uh, of uh, going live and then turning that into a podcast. Okay. So let's look at some live streaming stats. We've talked a lot about podcasting stats. Have you heard of this stat? I just really boggled my mind. Now, I know live live streaming is, we've said that every single year is the year of live streaming, but like by 2027, that is like not that far off. You know, next year is 2022. And, uh, um, and but the live streaming market will be worth over 247 billion dollars by 2027 that is huge so the potential if you have not started live broadcasting now is the time now is the time you know you only might you might start and very small at this stage uh, but grow your channel because this is a huge huge market and how about this one now this is kind of before the pandemic here you know in many places in the world um but the live streaming industry grew by 99% between April 2019 and April 2020. I'd be really interested to know what it was like between April 2020 and April 2021, because I hazard a guess it grew very, very rapidly. Um, I mean, it certainly did for me a huge, huge growth. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it's it's that's what's going to happen as we go, as we move forward, it's a huge, huge growth area. Um, Views is saying, thank you so much for all these comments, Views. Great to see you. Well, talk radio is worth billions of passive listeners and engaged uh, tranche if communities. Uh, yes. So um, absolutely. Uh, radio, talk radio is huge. I mean, if you think about some of the big podcasters out there, like Joe, um, Joe Rogan, uh, people like that who have, I mean, they are get, they are getting millions and millions of listeners. Uh, you know, this is absolutely huge. So Micah is watching in the house on the YouTube. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you. Good morning. Good evening. Whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. Um, and Martin, I love this. Thank you so much for Martin. Always on the ball thinking about the future and how we can up level our skills. Hone your skills now. By 2027, we
we will be millionaires. Yes, absolutely. So don't stop learning. Podcasting, live streaming, they're not overly difficult. Particularly if you're using tools like Restream and Descript, it's really super simple to just get out there. And remember, don't worry if you're not getting huge numbers of people watching. We'll talk about this. But even if you have one person watching live, that is one person who's turned up for you. And if you have zero people watching you live, remember, this is being repurposed into a piece of content for the replay and also for your podcast listeners. So you will get more people watching and listening in the future. Um, we've got Ava, is it Llama or I think it's Llama a Gamer watching on YouTube. Do you invest in Bitcoin? Uh, I, I do a little bit. I'm not massively into into the into cryptocurrency. I probably should be. Um, but yes, uh, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, why do you ask? I'm just interested in that. We've got Reg watching on YouTube as well. Great to see you. We've got the amazing Katie Simpson. Hope you're doing really well, Katie. I saw you going live the other day. What was it about... Um, Maybe was it, I don't know whether you've done it yet, about green screens. You were doing something about green screens and I haven't caught it yet, but I hope to see that. You're doing an amazing, amazing job. Um, so today we are talking, if you've just joined, a number of people have just started, uh, just joined us. Welcome. Let me know where in the world you're watching from and what device you are watching on as well. I'd love to know from you. Um, but we're talking about launching your podcast in 2020 from your live shows. In fact, let me just change this so that you can see. Do you like that? Just added a bit of a bit of a overlay there, so you know. So you know, um, that's what we're going to be talking about. I I want to help you launch your podcast in 2022, and I want to know what is stopping you if you haven't done it already. Put in the chat if you have a podcast. Yes or no? Have you got a podcast now? Yes or no? And then I want to know from you uh, when you're whether you're thinking about doing that. Let's have a look. Uh, we've got, um, I'm a gamer is saying, I'm mining Bitcoin. Cool. BTC. You see, I do know the lingo, you know, I'm not completely um, out of the loop when it comes to this. Uh, Katie is saying, definitely check out Katie's uh, live video on this. Maybe put the, you could put the link in the chat, Katie, because I think this is going to be a really interesting episode. Uh, so you've got a, an episode on green screens. Uh, in a couple of, of hours. And um, uh, Llama Gamer saying, I'm from Belgium and watching on a PC. Awesome place. My cousin lives in Belgium. It's a beautiful country. Uh, and Reg is watching from the beautiful country of Canada, which is also where Martin is from. In bed. That's a good place to be. Just chilling out. Love that. Uh, watching on an iPhone. Uh, that's great. Um, and Katie's saying, I've got three, uh, th three, three green screens. Are you talking about three green screens or have I missed that? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's Llama. Llama, thank you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, there we go. So, uh, let's go back to what we're talking about there. So, um, one of the things that you need to be aware of if you're going live and then turning into a podcast is to think about the different audiences that you have. Now, in this show today, I've got two audiences. If you are watching live today, it's awesome that you're here. It feels really much like a party, a community. We can have a chat. It's cool. We can have a dialogue. You are watching live and so you can see each other's comments. And actually, one of the things I should have said, actually, a new feature in Restream now is that uh, you are always able to, so the comments, when I comment, it might uh, it might have said Restream before, but now it should say my name if, if, if I've set it up correctly. So that's a new cool feature. But you can see each other's comments. Uh, and so uh, it feels more of that community feel. Now, if you're watching in the future, you can see other people's comments, but it's obviously not as interactive because I can't reply to your comment in in the future. But you also are the first people to be watching. So the first part of this uh, you'll be watching. So you're watching on your own uh, and you're from the future. And then of course your podcast listeners are in the future 
as well. They're listening on the road. It's a very intimate experience. But also, you can't see if you're listening to this. Listening to this. Now, this show is not being uh, made into a podcast, but if it were, I would have to explain what was happening on the screen as well. So you need to manage your live, your replay, and your podcast audiences. Uh, and a little, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in, in a minute. Um, uh, Lama, don't worry, you have to go. It's just been so cool to see you. God bless you too. It's been awesome to see. And Reg also, I totally agree with this. Being interactive is great, gives legitimacy and authority. You know, I don't know about you, but I've gone, I've seen some live shows. I've talked to Katie about this actually, um, where the host does not acknowledge the audience at all. Now, I know why they're doing this because they are create, they're going live purely, mostly purely, I think, 99% of it is to create content for the replay and maybe to repurpose for later. And I'm a massive believer in that. That is like one of the big reasons for me to go live for my Confident Live Marketing Show. I really want to create that content for my podcast listeners because my podcast audience is really, they, they how do I explain that? I just love them, my podcast listeners. But I also love my live viewers as well. And uh, if I was not, if I ignored all your comments, how would you feel? I'd Tell me now in the comments, how would you feel if I completely ignored you? Would you feel good about that? Would you not like care? Because uh, I kind of think you would. When I, when I, I've had this before, when I've highlighted comments from people watching live in the past. Some people have actually taken screenshots and they've been like, just really excited about that. Now you, you might not be, if you're watching live, you might not be that excited about that, but hopefully you feel that I'm engaging with you and I'm answering your questions and it feels really cool that way. Now, one important thing here is, uh, let me just put this up again. There's a balance because on one extreme, you don't reply to anyone's comments. That is really bad for community in my opinion, it just makes you feel watching that you just, the host does not care for you. I don't think that's good. But then you can go the other way and you can spend so much time with your live audience that the replay viewers in the future and your podcast listeners just get bored. Now, for some live shows, that's totally fine because you're just doing it for community. You're just doing it for the live. That's fine. But if you're repurposing this into a podcast or into uh, other videos or other content, or you want to focus on your replay audience, you need to get that balance as well. And I hope I'm getting that balance well in this show because I want to bring in some comments from time to time. And yes, I get excited when I see people I know, um, but that's fine. I just, but I don't spend a huge amount of time. Um, well, no, what I should say is I try not to get too distracted from the, the chat. So I will talk about what I want to talk about and then I'll go back to the chat and I'll do it that way. And the way I recommend that you do this in your live shows, maybe have three main sections to your live show. Share your first section, go to the comments, answer questions, get involved, have a bit of community stuff, then go back to the second uh, point that you want to make, go back to comments and break it up like that. And I think that works really well. What I, what I don't like is when you get distracted by the comment and it just becomes really boring for your live audience and it just becomes really difficult to repurpose for your podcast. So you need to juggle your live audience, your replay audience and your podcast listeners. And that just take, takes a bit of practice, but it is definitely, definitely possible to do. And I love that. Let's, um, so yeah, Lama, great to see you and um, awesome to see you here. Uh, Reg says on YouTube, I've watched a lot of uh, VTubers, video tubers, <laughs> uh, and no acknowledgement. And that equals a lack of connection, a loss of interest. And yeah, I totally agree with you. It just, I mean, you might be there. A lot of, a lot of us are there for learning and for the content and for entertainment. But for live, you're also there for community and for engagement. And I, I've just had that when I've commented and, and not had much feedback. Now that's, it's really difficult if you have, uh, if you've got a very popular show and you've got hundreds and thousands of comments, you know, the the, the host is not going to be able to, to reply to all of those. 
But in those situations, get a, get a group of moderators to go in there and to reply to comments. And uh, maybe you can reply to some of those comments live as well. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but maybe you want to, in, if that's the situation, maybe you want to do some smaller, more intimate lives uh, as well. Katie says, and I, and I agree with you, Katie. I feel dis so disappointed and disheartened when the host doesn't acknowledge my comments. Some don't answer the comments after the video either. Now, I have to admit, I don't do a particularly good job at that, um, answering the comments afterwards, but I do think it's really important. And it's one of the things that I want to do more next year. I'm actually, one of my goals and aims next year is to hire a community manager um, to help with this because I'm going to be honest with you, just totally transparent here. You know, sometimes I get a bit of overwhelm when it comes to that. Um, but in an ideal world, you reply to comments live, which I'm doing, and it, Restream makes this so easy because I can see all your comments here, can highlight them on the screen like I'm doing with Katie. But the other thing you can do afterwards is go back and reply to comments because not everyone is going to see them. Maybe Katie, I, I think you're still here, but maybe, I don't know, maybe the doorbell rang and you have to go off and you've missed it. So it's good to reply to those. And also that just helps the algorithm because I'm, I'm constantly replying and you can have uh, many communities really in your live streams or in the replay of your live streams as well. Now you can do that on Facebook. You can do that on LinkedIn. You can't do that on YouTube because the live chat will end and then you'll then have to move into the comments. But uh, you can certainly do that on Facebook and, and LinkedIn. I'll definitely check that out. Um, you can't build, uh, so what's this say from Reg? You can't build a simp army if you don't acknowledge you have one. Yes, totally. So I think community is really important. And actually you can get, if if you're struggling to uh, find moderators, then find your biggest fans in your community and they can be your moderators as well. I mean, you know, Katie is not my official moderator, but Katie, you do like, you're like amazing. I, I just love what you do. And uh, you just give so much value. So um, yeah, anyway, enough of that. I, I just think that's great. Thank you so much, Reg. Um, and thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's great to have you here. Another live stream stat. More than one in five videos on Facebook are live and are watched three times longer than pre-recorded videos. That's pretty amazing. You know, we're wanting to increase our watch time, but did you know that about Facebook? Um, more than one in five videos, a fifth of videos on Facebook are live and are watched three times longer than pre-recorded video. But you see, you've got the best of both worlds, haven't you? Because it's live and then it becomes replay. So love it, love it. Okay, so how do you actually, just in the final like seven, seven or so minutes, how do you actually launch your podcast from your live show? How, what's what's the methodology? Methodology? Me method? <laughs> I can't speak today. Methodology. That's the word. Methodology. Please tell me that's the right word. It's been a long day. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, or the process. That would have been an easier word to use. What's the process for launching your podcast from your from your live show? Uh, or from restreaming it, it, for that matter. Um, and it's really simple. It's really simple. You know, it comes down to the first thing that you need to do is plan. I've, I've got the five P's. So it's very simple. The first P is planning. You just need to plan what you're going to talk about. Keep it super simple. Share three things. What's the title going to be? So today's title is Launch a Podcast in 2022. It's not rocket science, science what I'm going to be sharing today. I'm going to be sharing how to launch a podcast quickly and easily for next year in 2022. So I, I could come up with three. I've actually got more than three points in today's show, but start with three points. Uh, so that's the planning. Um, yeah, let's, let's put that on the screen. So that's the first thing, planning. The next thing that you'll need to do is to promote it uh, at some point, whether you'll promote the live show or you'll promote the podcast. Then it's the producing, the producing of the, of the actual live show itself. So um, and and then you'll want to uh, promote it later, and then finally repurposing. So that's that's for live, but it's slightly different with podcasts. Once you've finished your live show, what you'll then want to do is go into Restream, 
and download the video and the audio files from the recording area. Download that. And what I recommend is using an editing tool like Descript or Descript. Because what that does, it will transcribe the words. You can go through it. Just remove any bits that you misspoke. But don't over-edit it because people love the human side of it. So just put that in. If you want to have an intro and an outro, do that. You can have a bit of music at the beginning and the end, but just keep it super simple. That's your podcast editing. That's it. And then you can download it as an MP3. Descript will even like level the audio, get it perfect for you. You download it and you're almost done. You're almost done. The next thing that you need to do is give your podcast to the world. If you want to know a bit more in-depth information, we haven't got time for that today, but check out my previous year podcast now because I go into this in much more detail. But the, the next thing that you will need to do is to upload it to a podcast host. A podcast host makes your uh, podcast available to the world in the same way that you, ha if you have a website, you have to find a web host that will keep, that will store your website and make it accessible to everyone. So a podcast host will do that. The one that I recommend, as I said earlier, is Captivate FM, but there are loads of ones out there. This will also allow you to submit it to Apple Podcasts and all those different places, and then you can let people know. And then, of course, there's the final thing that you need to think about, and that is promoting your live your podcast, sorry. So you promoted a live show, but you got to let people know about your podcast. On all of my live shows, I always remind people to find out more about the podcast. And I've got a podcast page, which you can check out. Um, so check out my podcast, check out my podcast page. Uh, just to give you an example of the kind of thing that you can do, it is at iog.me forward slash podcast. That's easy, isn't it? IAG.me forward slash podcast. And there I've got like some quick links to be able to follow or subscribe to my podcast, keeping it really super simple. And then you can see all the episodes as well that way. So definitely check out that. Thank you, Reg, saying you're good. I try to be. I try to be. I'm, I'm here to help you. That's my goal is to help you launch your podcast next year and launch your live show and to keep it really super simple. This show is really about winning. It's winning with live video. Katie, thank you so much for your uh, comment here. I'm loving the live video to podcast workflow that you teach. It takes me about one and a half hours to edit and publish my podcast episode after half an hour of live video. That is cool. Thank you for the feedback. So that's, I mean, that's pretty amazing. You know, and Katie is doing all of this herself. You can, you know, you can pay for podcast editors uh, and do all that. But, you know, this is actually not that difficult. You know, you just create half hour episode for a live show and then just repurpose it using those different things. So thank you so much for that, Katie. I love what you do as well. Well, that is it for today's show. I think we're pretty much out of time. If there are any final questions just before we go, let me know. And I would love to I'd love to encourage you really with your live show and podcast. So don't be shy. If you have a podcast or a live show or if you've got any ideas for your live show or podcast, pop them in. I would love to know um, because, uh, you know, I'd actually love to, to have a listen and, and see if I can uh, give you some encouragement too. Reg, thank you so much. Uh, you've subscribed. Thanks for the link. I'd love to know more about what you do, Reg. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know from you. It's been great to see you today. Uh, and Katie's saying, I'm just trying to add a blog show notes to the workflow. That will come with time. And actually with Captivate, you can do that. Captivate FM will allow you to actually embed that into your into your blog um, quite easily as well. So there you go. That is it for today. Well, we're nearly out of time. Just to let you know that this show, Winning With Live Video, goes live every single Tuesday at 5 p.m. in the UK. That's 6 p.m. Central uh, European time, 12 noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific, 
I think I got that right, 9 a.m. Pacific. And um, I'd love to see you next week. Next week, the aim, this may change, but the aim is to talk about how to monetize your live shows. So if you're interested in making money with your live shows, that's what we're going to be talking about next week. Thank you, Katie. Fab, it's uh, great to have you here. Thank you so much if you've watched live. Thank you if you watched the replay. I should have said this earlier, but if you are still with us and you're watching the replay, do put hashtag replay in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Well, I'm going to get my dinner now and uh, and then take my daughter to her violin lesson. That's what I'm doing for the rest of the day. But thank you so much for watching. And I encourage you to win with live video. I'll see you soon. Toodaloo!